Hey, everybody, and welcome to Beer Googles, double E, double O, double G. Today, I have two special guests on from the BS Bargain Bin podcast. I've got Ben and Sandro, but I'm only saying it because it's in alphabetical order. How are you gentlemen doing today? Doing real well. Thanks a lot for having us on, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us. Uh, we had a blast doing our podcast, so I'm really looking forward to jumping in on yours now. Well, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm really happy to have you on. Last, uh, well, I guess it was released this week. Today is the 19th, and I believe your podcast or the one we did together will be released tomorrow. Correct. Um, and uh, it was on a, a small, a little blockbuster movie known as Airborne, and it was beautiful. And I'm so grateful. Thank you for having me on your show. No, it was great, man. It was awesome to have you on. And uh, thank you so much for that recommendation. It's a movie that I had seen uh, the box art for in uh, old video stores for a long time, but never actually sat down to watch. And I can't believe I missed it for this long. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about BS Bargain Bin Podcast. What is this uh, concept all about? Go ahead, Ben. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, no, uh, originally it started off with... Um, uh, I had been living in Ontario, not far from uh, Sandro, and then I had to move to Nova Scotia. And it was a way for us to uh, stay in touch uh, on a weekly basis and talk about something that I love anyway. I'm a really big movie guy, and I love showing people film uh, that they might not encounter on their regular viewing habits. So there's a lot of B-movies on there. Some could argue Z-movies. Um, but yeah, Sandro came up with the idea that we should like sit back, relax, talk on a weekly basis, and just kind of put stuff out there. And it, it, it's been going for quite a while. Well, I say quite a while, probably about around 30-ish episodes now. Um, it's just a lot of fun. It's great to dig up some old movies and uh, put uh, Sandro through the torture of my uh, my favorite films. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah I've, I'm learning so much of ben, about Ben every week we do the podcast. And most of it is that I thought he had good taste in mu movies, and I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so what movies did you guys watch together as friends before you started this is that where you got the wrong assumption sandro is you thought you know you were like you and ben would watch like terminator 2 and be like oh he has good taste in movies well yeah i mean terminator 2 is my favorite movie of all time well look at that i'm and... not psychic or anything <laughs> and uh when we got together obviously it felt pretty different because we would watch whatever movies Ben had in mind, you know, like anything from Zombievers to you know, <laughs> Tucker and Dale versus Evil or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, I think the difference was that when he was still in Ontario, we would get together and actually watch the movies together. So regardless if it was a good or bad movie, it was still fun because we were together. Um, now it's a completely different experience because I'm watching these primarily by myself to prepare for the episodes and I have no one to crack wise with. <laughs> so it's kind of a Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode when you were together. Oh, but definitely. Now, it, now it's a serious like breakdown and a dissection of the art. I don't think he would call a lot of what I recommend art. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've I did make him, I made him watch Zombievers, which we haven't covered on the show yet. Uh we watched uh, Spookies, which I still think is hilarious, and he will forever hate me for. Oh, such um, a terrible movie. Why do you even bring it up? How many I, minutes will you never get back, Sandro? We're never going to review that movie, um, <laughs> simply because I don't feel like doing two half episodes. Oh, it's great. If you look into the history, it's like a mishmash of different parts of movies, different parts of productions, and obviously it does not work out well, but... Hey, it's getting a Blu-ray release soon, so you never know, buddy. I might bring it up. So, so it's like John Travolta's Gotti? Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, oh. <laughs> that I will not do. <laughs> so you guys met. How did you meet? You guys hung out, and then obviously you parted ways. What's, you, what's your origin story? How did the two of you cross paths? Well, I mean, Ben is a huge movie guy. And I'm really big into video games. So naturally, we met working at a bookstore. <laughs> Perfect place. Is it one of the one of the ones where they sell like used video games and things like that as well? Or is it all retail new? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, retail new. Um, <laughs> ben, I don't know if you want to get into it. I mean, he 
it was from Nova Scotia and came to Ontario. And I don't know, Ben, you go yeah. for this one. Yeah. Um, I moved to Ontario with an ex-girlfriend and ended up finding a job at this bookstore that was maybe a five minute walk from my apartment. Uh, it just worked out really well. Um, and I was just the guy working in receiving and Sandra was on the sales floor and we just kind of hit it off. And then it was pop culture reference one after the other and making wise cracks about everything to each other, about each other, about other people. And it, it was just a very organic build to the friendship. And we, yeah, we've been friends ever since. Very cool. And how long ago was that? Oh God, I don't remember. 15 20? years ago? 15? Yeah, 15 nice. maybe. Yeah. So it was like 40 year old version kind of like one of you, you were Seth Rogen. Ben and uh, Sandra, not that you were the virgin, but you would have been the sales floor. So you'd have been either Paul Rudd or uh, what's his face? Funny enough, I actually was working in receiving before Ben got hired. And then I got moved to full time, like head of fiction. And Ben got hired in receiving. Okay, so you actually opened the door for Ben. Probably. I mean, he owes everything to like me, it. so I would say oh, this is probably up. one of them. Is... <laughs> <laughs> no, the one great thing I do have to say about that store, though, is uh, just outside, uh, there was a uh, secondhand um, film and uh, audio like CD store. Um, it's a, an Ontario chain called The Beat Goes On. And you would always go in there and find the most amazing hard to find movies for cheap. It's like the people that ran the business didn't know the worth of what they had, like the value. So you go in and buy a movie for $5 that if you tried to buy online would probably cost you a hundred. Yeah. Cause it, they never went on eBay, right? Like, exactly. There's some collector value to them, but they also had a bunch of shit movies and that's right up my alley. So yeah, I'll get like a $5 <laughs> classic, but I'll also get $2 garbage film and watch that more often. Uh, that's how I found some of the best. That's how I started my Corey Haim collection, actually. Cor- a, a, a Corey Haim collection? Yes, sir. Is blown away in that collection? Uh, VHS. Okay. Not DVD. Yeah. I mean, look, it's young Nicole Eckert. You can't go wrong. Yeah. They got married, didn't they? I don't remember. Or they were dating for a long time. They didn't get married. Never mind. I've I've actually got some stories with that because I've I uh, I interviewed uh, Taj Jackson, who's Michael Jackson's nephew, and Corey Feldman is kind of interlaced a little bit with the whole stuff that was going on. I have his autobiography. I'm looking at it yeah. right now. Have you seen Have you seen the documentary, The Two Truths, or the Yeah, uh, or my, yeah. my Truth? Yeah, yeah. So. It's, it's interesting. Uh, yeah. It's interesting. I don't know the claim because I, I can't take the claim, but there are some other ones with evidence that are more corroborated. It's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, what a, a dark chapter in American pop culture. A little bit, right? It's yeah. craziness. So this collection of Hain, this collection of Hain, now it it obviously must have some Feldman in it because the Hain Feldman oh, yeah. uh, paradox or whatever. I don't know what the hell you call the <laughs> phenomena. The car wreck, the, court, the Feldman name, yeah, the two quarries, whatever, yeah, the car yeah. wreck. Let's call, it. yeah. Um, what is your favorite of your collection, and is there one that you don't have yet that you are on the hunt? Um, ooh, do, do you need my favorite with the two quarries or just and no with Haim because you Haim, have a Haim collection. You, you yeah, you mentioned oh. a, a Haim collection, not a Feldman yeah. collection. So, um, I really do love Prayer of the Roller Boys. Uh, it's one of my all-time favorite movies, not just Hayden very movies. good. Um, a guilty pleasure. Well, they're all kind of guilty pleasures. What am I talking about? But uh, I really do love Snowboard Academy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I also love Jim Varney. So throw Ernest in a Corey Haim movie, I'm sold. Um, yeah. I think the one I'm looking for right now is probably Demolition High. I have Demolition University, but not the first one. I'll probably. Uh, Treat myself to that sometime down the road. How about you, Sandro? Uh, do you have the Feldman collection? No. To Ben's no. game collection? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not really a person with a physical media collection at this point. Um, back when I did, I was collecting Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, and I'd gotten it up to about 22 or so. And um, But then I stopped. I just stopped buying physical media. It wasn't really for me anymore. Uh, unfortunately, most of my DVDs also got stolen out of a storage locker. So 
Even my old movies I don't have anymore. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, luckily I gave Ben the movies that he wanted out of the collection before they got stolen. Uh, what was it? Encino Man and Varsity Blues? Two classics. Yes, sir. I don't want your laugh. No wheezing the juice. All right. Best Vanderbeek moment is in the mu- is in the music video Blow with Kesha. Oh, he I... is, he's in what? the entire movie. It, it's the it's the best music video ever. I've never even heard of this. Kesha Blow. It is you. Um, you'll never you'll 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 thank me. All just, right. Just, once once we up. shut it down, it's worth the four minute or whatever thing it is. It's great. His, Do you know they call they call him Jane Vanderdouche? I mean, come on, it can't be that. Oh. Do you know who uh, the comedian uh, Tig Notaro is? I yes, Tig. Yep, yeah. in Star Trek uh, Discovery, and she, yeah, the comedian. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, she's notorious for not knowing pop culture well, and I saw a video on YouTube of her having to guess through a series of questions who the celebrity next to her is, and it's Vanderbeek, and she has the roughest time trying to figure out who he is it's awesome that is amazing I, is it on youtube somewhere oh yeah uh have to check it out that's beautiful so um so then you guys split up now i'm assuming you're no longer at the bookstore sandro and obviously ben you've moved away right yeah i'm still working with the company uh just a, a different branch uh obviously oh, in a different cool. location but it's uh it's yeah it's good Did i like you it like there. the did you like the opportunity to get and be in different places? Have you moved around a lot in your life or? Uh, not really. No. Um, I do love the different opportunities. Uh, I kind of worked around mainly Halifax in Nova Scotia, uh, through, uh, the bookstore company and now the now defunct, uh, HMV. I ran five stores for that company, uh, in Nova Scotia and Ontario. Of course, me and, you know, physical media, especially when it comes to film, of course, I'm going to be there. Um, so I moved, I moved to Ontario. I moved back to Nova Scotia. I moved to Ontario and now back in Nova Scotia. Um, yeah, I've, I've moved around a bit. I've worked at a few different uh, places, but, uh, at, Sandra, you've pretty much been Ontario all life. Yes. Uh, since I was four years old. Yeah. I've been in the Kitchener Waterloo, Ontario area. And that's where you found me and that's where you left me. All right. Are you still with the company as well, Sandra, or did you, uh, oh, move heck no, move no. No, that was just, I had just finished um, university. Did Ben fire you? <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you left? I think I left before <laughs> Ben, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think he was still in Ontario and still there when I left. Um, but no, I'd, I'd finished university and I didn't really know what I was doing with my life. And I just needed a job. So bookstore was hiring. Had a full-time job. It was something to do for the time. And I think I was only there a year or so, maybe. Uh, then I went to you know, uh, EB Games, which would be the sister store to what you guys know as GameStop. Yeah, is it Electronics Boutique? That's, that's, what, it, e- e- that's what it started as, um, that it used to be Electronics Boutique. And then they just changed the name to EB you know the implication being that it was electronics boutique but it wasn't actually an official abbreviation the name was legally eb games okay it's like uh, lg was lucky gold star and they called it life's good they just lied about what it was is that the origin i always wondered about that (laughs) yeah yeah the old and if you look up old lucky gold star like the product was crap like it was just really cheap it wasn't just inexpensive it was literally cheap but they've come a long way. They made a lot better product now. Kind of like the origin story of JVC. There you go. That sounds about exactly right. And it is a Korean company, just like Samsung started out, like as a value brand or an inexpensive brand, mm-hmm. and worked their way up. Kia, Hyundai, they're all they're all crushing it in the manufacturing side for sure. So BS Bargain Bin, you guys review movies. Do you each have your favorite review that you've done so far? Ooh, tough one. Um, lately, hey, we know your favorite movie. Yeah. We've been... Uh, lately, we've been getting into laughing fits. And I don't know if that we're just kind of finding our groove now or if I just pick really bad movies. But uh, I'd say one of my favorite that we've covered has been uh, The Ninth Gate, uh, Johnny Depp film. 
Wait, are you talking about the whole movie? The no, the recording we did. Uh, the the movie was just great for you and I to cover. I what mean, podcast? Yeah, which movie podcast or which movie review or podcast review have you done that you like the most, Sandro? Um, I'm still just a little baffled by Ben's answer. <laughs> oh, because the Ninth Gate review wasn't one of our best ones. It just had a really good five minute stretch of nonstop laughter. Um, but the rest of the episode was, it was all right. I don't know if I'll call it the best. Favorite, not best. Are we doing favorite? I'm, I'm saying this one just because, and Mark, I'm sure you have this moment too, where, uh, especially recording as long as you have, um, that moment where it just kind of clicks and you're like, I know what I'm doing here now. And then yes. you just run with it. And then the following episodes, just that energy is carried over into those. That's where it all made sense is that one laughing fit in the ninth gate. I get it. So that's what put you on the tracks. Yeah. That... Now you're just kind of on cruise control and in a weird way. Like it's kind of like the 10,000 hour rule, but it might not have taken 10,000 hours for you. Exactly. I can't disagree with Ben on that one. That, that, that laughing fit in the ninth gate which is still one of my favorites, and I can play back, and I will start laughing uncontrollably, was absolutely the turning point for us. That was when we did find our, like, start to find our groove, and, and it did kind of click in and make sense, and this idea that I had when I came up with the podcast, it, it felt like it, at that point it was no longer an idea, it was now a product. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And like yeah, this kind of like... started when uh, I when I moved to Nova Scotia, um, I had to quarantine for two weeks, and it was a great way to keep myself sane. And then it actually started turning into a lot of fun. And then with the ninth gate, it really clicked as like this is a staple in my life now, and I need to keep doing this. That's cool. Yeah, you, that's not one the one of the episodes you meant uh, you referred to me uh, to listen. So I have to listen to that one next. Well, I mean, I can I can see where Ben was coming from in regards to that being the favorite. I mean, if we're just talking about best for like quality, then I would say they're probably the the two that I recommended to you, which we put out back to back, and I thought that was like just two solid weeks of maybe not Ben's favorite, but just we knocked it out of the park twice in a row with tough turf and cutting class. They were two episodes that were, I think I described to you, they were the best representation of what we want this to be. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I I'll, I'll check out the that. ninth grade. Yeah. I mean, it, they, they sounded great and I really, I really enjoyed them. So like I said, it's why we reached out and connected uh, to do one together. And obviously while we're talking now, what, uh, so you, what, what led you to, uh, to the BS Bargain Bin podcast. I'm curious. Um, I think it was a tweet that either, I think Sandra, you'd put out about asking for a movie recommendation. So I recommended mm -hmm. Airborne. And then, and then I said, Hey, I watched it 8,342 times. <laughs> I think I'd be happy to jump on if you want. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to impose, but I'm happy to do that. Cause I think this is fun. Did you this already is, follow us or did, did it just somehow? Not at all. Up? It just popped I, up in your feed somehow. It uh, popped up somewhere in the feed. I have no idea. It's it's synchronous, gentlemen. Synchronous events. But so we've we've been covering a lot of my favorite, uh, like I said, B to Z list movies. Um, you, you're obviously a film fan as well. Um, what are what are some of the staple movies in your in your catalog in your library that you love that you think most people wouldn't really appreciate as much as you do? I'm going to give you three movies that are my absolute favorite, and they have my least favorite actor, female actor in them. Okay, that that actor is Andy McDowell. Oh, all right. And those those three movies are. Groundhog Day, which is obviously just a great, phenomenal movie. Multiplicity and Hudson Hawk. I love all of those movies. Those movies are three of my apps. Like, it's kind of the breadth of the comedy that I just love. I, I, all those movies are phenomenal to me. Yeah. 
multiplicity in their, in their weird way. Yeah. Wow. Michael Keaton is one Love of him. the most underrated. I know he's made these comebacks and he's like genius now or whatever. He's always been genius. Always. When when he was in Pacific Heights and played that creepy bad guy in that, mm -hmm. oh, he's so good. I mean, gung ho, Mr. Mom, Mr. I mean, Mom, for the, sure. The list goes on and on, right? Uh, oh. I'm trying to remember too. Was it? Uh, he was in Jackie Brown, right? Yes, he was yes. the FBI agent in that. He was. Yeah. That was kind of his. That was kind of his resurgence. That was like his Travolta Pulp Fiction moment. We yeah, and had a little was, bit of a resurgence again. Yeah, and that tied that movie in with that uh, Clooney Lopez movie. Oh God, it was weird. He played uh, the same character in that, and it linked the the universes together. Much like uh, his uh, recent turn as the Vulture. I'm very curious to see Morbius now. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. So, but um, to completely answer your question, that's that's like my set of movies that I really love. But Hudson Hawk is just awful in its greatness. Um. Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man with Don Johnson and Mickey Rourke mm -hmm. and Big John Studd of yeah. WWF fame. As Jack um, Daniels. One of the Baldwins, but not one of the good Baldwins. <laughs> Daniel Baldwin is in it. Yep. Uh, Tier Carrera coming out of Wayne's World or going into Wayne's World. I forget which one it was. I think it was coming out of. Uh, love that movie, and I have that movie on Laserdisc. Such a good movie. Also, um... Uh, Giancarlo Esposito from uh, okay. Breaking Bad, Gus. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. yep. Um, oh, there's others there, too. Who is the villain, the main villain? Um, yeah, it's uh, Tom Sizemore. Tom Sizemore, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michael, Ma cast. Michael Madsen, Michael Madsen uh, Jr. is what I yeah, like. Michael I, Madsen Light is what I like I to call him. always confuse those two growing up. Yeah. Madsen from, like, Reservoir Dogs. Mm-hmm. And Sizemore from like Saving Private Ryan, obviously this yep. movie as well. Uh, God, talk about like life imitating art. That dude had some serious <laughs> drug problems. Whoo! But uh, uh, yeah, that's another movie I like. And then like you know, I just like bad movies, but I love great movies too, like Aliens. Obviously, how could you not? Predator. You know, yeah. Stuff like that. Um, have you seen a movie or heard of a movie called Boss Level? I have not. Uh, it's a new film that stars Frank Grillo as the lead. Uh, the villain is played by one Mr. Mel Gibson. Um, okay. Imagine, uh, have you seen Nobody with Odukert? No, but I'm very familiar with it. They they bombarded okay. us with the with the movie uh, you know previews and stuff. Uh, combine Nobody, like the action and wit of Nobody, with the plot of groundhog day <laughs> oh is that the one where he has to relive the day it's on yep. netflix right uh it might be now i, I think it is. okay i i'm familiar with it. it's either hulu or netflix yes i have heard of it it's a very Let's, fun watch i will have to watch that it's on my list so sandro yeah, i have a question up? for you if i if i may sir sure um, i mean i didn't know half the stuff you guys just said uh, of your 22 Schwarzenegger films. Yeah. Which, which was the pride of your collection? Well, obviously it was Terminator 2. That is... It was Junior. Don't lie. I've never seen There's, Junior. It wasn't Twins? I've never... I love Twins. Uh, I don't know how you can not love Twins. I mean, and he... Yeah. Jingle all the way? I, I like Jingle oh. all the way. I don't know if everybody does, but I mean, he... Definitely has some great comedy movies when it comes to things like Twins, Kindergarten Cop, Jingle All the Way. But for me, it was the action that really drew me to him. So things like Terminator 2, Commando, Predator. Oh, Commando's so good. Cole had to split. <laughs> uh, Remember when I said favorite... I'd kill you last? I lied. <laughs> my favorite Running Man. I, I, running Man's amazing. I love uh, Dawson. Richard Dawson in that. He's so family feudish in that. He's perfect. Or family, yeah, family feud? Yeah, yeah family feud. Yeah, he was the creepy guy that kiss all the, the female well, contestants. Yeah, and he comes from Hog of Hogan's Heroes fame. What? Who was he yeah, on? He was, in Ho Heroes? he was in Hogan's Heroes. Uh, he, played, he played the British guy in Hogan's Heroes. Oh, my he God. Was, that was, that's Richard Dawson. 
Oh my God. I have to go back yeah. to that show. It's a light bulb moment, my friend. It, you will change your life when you realize some of the stuff that other people have been in. Do either of you guys watch uh, or have watched Robot Chicken? Yes, right? Seth Green fans all around? Seen it in the past, yes, but not. I can't say that I'm proficient in it. They did one sketch that was Hogan's Heroes, but it was Hulk Hogan and his friends, other wrestlers like Roddy Piper. Oh, that I can't wait. I'm looking yeah. that up as well. It's just pro wrestlers trying to escape a POW camp during World War II. <laughs> so, Sandro? Yeah. Did, did did they close the time loop in any of the Terminators, or are there still questions oh, left there's, unanswered? There's so many problems with the Terminator plots at this point. Um, quite frankly, though, if you're watching it to be mentally stimulated on the scientific side of it, you're in the wrong place. You should just be watching it to to see the action, and that's about it. Can you rank the uh, Terminators? That is tough. Two, two, is it two? Is it two one salvation, and then maybe four three two one? I don't know what the other ones are after that. Uh, Genesis was not really good, and this Fate one was not so good. Well, I mean, I would put three at the bottom myself okay uh it's definitely two and then one i don't think that's even debatable um yeah. it's just that middle where we kind of get mixed up with salvation genesis and uh what was the last one called dark fate, fate? dark fate that's dark right. fate. Yes. which actually Thank wasn't you, too man. bad um i think I'm maybe gonna... you guys should review terminator 3 no no that was a bad movie <laughs> Uh, I would say probably then <laughs> Dark Fate, Salvation, and Genesis. Okay. Ben, yeah. you have anything to add to that? Uh, I, I wouldn't mind doing an episode on uh, on 3. I really like Nick Stahl. Uh, I know it's a bad movie, and it just kind of proves the point that the story was pointless in the first place. Um I'm kind of curious, uh, Sandra, with your uh, with your gaming knowledge, um, I've only ever played one Terminator game, and it was the Terminator for the Sega Genesis, and it was hard as shit. Uh, have they done any other Terminator games that you would actually recommend? Because I know they did, like, what, RoboCop versus Terminator? But anything after that, I'm completely in the dark outside of the, uh, the T2 uh, track shooter, like the rail shooter arcade game. Are you serious? Yeah. I just put out a review for Terminator three weeks ago. <laughs> We're very close friends. Uh, I'm glad, I don't know if yeah. you could tell. I'm glad you guys are so close. This good is to, beautiful. Good to know that you partake in my life outside of the bargain bin. Thanks, bud. Oh, yeah, so that definitely I, wasn't a plug by any means. Did I just start the beginning and the beginning of the end of you two? Is that what we just did? Your origin oh, it, end? It's over. Oh, man. And I'm going to put a stamp on that one with uh, <laughs> exclamation mark of Spookies and Terminator 3 double review episode. <laughs> double review. Um, Nay, triple review. <laughs> in regards to your question, though, Ben, this newest Terminator that I just reviewed, um, it's okay. It's not amazing, but it definitely has a very Terminator feel. Outside of that, there really hasn't been anything notable to play in regards to Terminator since, like, maybe RoboCop versus Terminator. And even then, you play as RoboCop, not as the Terminator. Um, and that, we're talking oh. Sega Genesis Super Nintendo days. Um, mm -hmm. And beyond that, like, it's not a franchise that's well represented in video games. So, Sandro, speaking of this, uh, it, we've taken a little bit of a side side tangent to video games. What is it? What is one of you have another project, right? You have another podcast and a website that you work on. What's that called? And what does that entail? Uh, so that's actually called Pixel Opinions. Um, it's kind of a similar story to Bargain Bin in that when I left the bookstore, I went to EB Games for seven years and moved on from there because, well, EB Games and GameStop don't necessarily have the best reputation and it's not all undeserved. Um, so I, I, I moved on to the wonderful world of insurance, but I was still in communication with a lot of people I worked with. And we were talking about how we miss just talking about video games all the time. Guys were saying, well, I'd love to do a podcast. I'd love to do some writing. And I just 
like the BS bargain bin said, you know what, let's not just talk about how we want to do it. Let's just do it. And I sat down, no knowledge of how to make a website, sat down in front of like a free web maker and made a website. And now five years later, we're doing pretty well. That's awesome. So uh, do you have a pretty decent following or do people know you? Um, I don't know if they know me uh, well, per se. You know, in general, know of the show. It, it's a humble it? it's a humble little thing. Uh, the website is not the most popular, uh, primarily because I don't think people want to read stuff anymore. Uh, what, what's reading? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> exactly. But we do video reviews for all of the articles that we do. And, you know, on YouTube we have... That's the modest 1,500 subscribers. Um, some of our videos up to thirty to 50,000 views. And um, again, this is like, like with Ben. I don't necessarily do it to run a successful website as much as my friends that are also into video games. It's something for us to kind of carry on together and have a hobby and, and you know, get some free video games. That's pretty awesome. So you actually review them on this show? I'm sorry? You you review them on the show? Well, we do actual structured video reviews where we'll write Okay, so the companies will ship you their games or you'll request them or how do you get how does how does that process work? Well, that is a whole process. Um and it's uh, changing. Okay. It's, it's becoming a lot easier for people now. Um when I first started and we're not even talking that long ago, five years ago, it was find PR emails however you can, try to reach out to companies and make contacts and hope that they respond. Um, now, as we've kind of in the last generation moved to a lot more digital stuff, there's websites that you can get registered for. You have to be like validated, obviously. And then you can just have almost like your Amazon shopping cart and request keys and you may or may not get them, but it's all digital and it's a lot more automated, less personal. Um, so there's some good and bad with it. Sure. All right. I have to bring something up here too. Um, yeah, Sandra, please. Sandra was talking about how he's not really a collector of physical media anymore. And that totally works for him in the realm of video games. Uh, I myself, I, I have to own a physical copy of movies. But Sandra, why why do you think that you're more comfortable just having digital copies as opposed to physical? Is it a space issue or is it just you go through them and never really go back to them? Like why why digital more than physical for you? And Mark, this question's coming for you too. I mean, obviously a big part of it is convenience. I know back when I started, if you got a Nintendo game to review, you would have to ship the copy back to them sometimes after you finish reviewing the game. Now they just send you a code and it's yours and you don't have to think about it. You don't need shelf space. It's just a lot more convenient. Fair enough. Uh, Mark, how many uh, physical copies of Multiplicity do you own? Uh, probably three. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> On multiple platforms. Yeah, I'm I'm a collector of physical media as well. Good. I've, I've got I've got about fifty laser discs still, and it's funny because I I haven't had a laser disc player forever, but I've been on eBay scouring looking for just a functional one. Mm -hmm. I finally found one for like you know fifty bucks or something. So I popped in Star Wars and it worked. I'm like, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's like it was like uh, Nirvana. <laughs> And like the the quality is what the quality is. I know I know what it is, and I know that it makes grinding sounds when it's playing. But it's a laser disc. I love it. It's part I don't know, of the it's experience. Like, it is. Um, so I've got I've got thousands of movies of all different formats. Same. I love it. Uh, and and I still have HD DVD as well. I don't. I didn't throw that out either. Oh wow. Yeah, I was an I was an early adopter. So I was never a Sony uh, Sony proprietor guy. And mm -hmm. they had the they had the beta. Yep. They tried. Remember the memory stick? They tried that with the memory. They tried yep. it with uh, their car. They had a uh, like not fire. I think it was fire. It wasn't Firebird, but it was like one of the plug it. You know, one of the plugs. And I'm like, screw yeah. that, man. And then when Sony came out with the Blu-ray, I went Microsoft Toshiba. I went HD DVD. 
And, you know, Sony's movies won out because they had so many that, to put out on Blu-ray. Well, and, and that's a weird well. thing, too, because Microsoft was pushing HD DVD so hard, but they like, were. The, but the Xbox couldn't play them. You had to get an uh, like a separate. Like, I have two of those, and oh. I have an old I have an old Xbox just oh. to play them. <laughs> uh, I've never seen one. What uh, do they? Are they like comparable to Blu-ray? Yeah, I have an I have an Xbox. Uh, I have an Xbox uh, 360 still, and I have what's okay. called an HD DVD player, which is basically just a D, an HD DVD drive mm-hmm. that's in a an external usb connected drive i mean it's pretty basic um yeah they it is the same quality it's actually as good if not just a little better i don't think it held as much data on a disc but they were still earlier right they didn't get into more iterations and uh being a, a physical media collector like myself like i love throwing an old vhs in like the last vhs tape i watched was harley davidson and the marlboro man not that long ago um, and just seeing like the visual noise and knowing that there's going to be a tracking issue at a certain point almost <laughs> adds to the movie for me. And it Sandra, does. with with digital copies of games or like emulators and ROMs and whatnot, do you is there still a nostalgia factor for you, or is there like like do you miss holding the old NES controller, or is it just as long as you can play the game, it's fine? I miss smelling it when you open the box. Well, I mean, you're talking about two different things here, Ben. Um, retro gaming <laughs> versus the digital media. It's not like you had digital Super Nintendo games. Um, yes, there's emulators, but I don't, you know, I don't like those. They, as you asked, they don't feel authentic. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I still have a Super Nintendo. Um, for older consoles, I didn't get rid of. Uh, a lot of the things I didn't collect them, but I also didn't get rid of what I did have. Okay, uh, it's just more into the new generations that I I like getting, you know, digital. And to be honest, one thing you learn working in video games, moving into these generations. When I was a kid and I went to Blockbuster to rent a game for the Super Nintendo, one of the most exciting parts was driving home and flipping through the instruction booklet, you know, on yes. the way, anticipating the game. Started getting into newer games, you open the box and there's a leaflet advertising other products. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it just, it, it's not the same. And, feeling. and print and print with a website that you can access uh, codes and stuff. Too. Yeah. Sometimes don't even for, just don't forget the website. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes even just the, the manual will be um, like an option on the, the launch screen of the game. But mm. I'm already in the game. I don't want to look at the manual now. Unfortunately, a lot of newer gamers these days aren't going to know that excitement. You know, you think back to like the Legend of Zelda manual from the Super Nintendo a Link to the Past, and it was thick. You open it up and no, seriously, like it was just, it was just exciting. It's not the same anticipation at this point. Yeah, they definitely streamlined the physical production down. Uh, I get that for sure. Um, it's the same for me in like buying physical media where... Uh, you you buy a Blu-ray and it doesn't even have the director's commentary on it. But I have a subscription to a service like Shutter, and they'll upload two different files you can stream. One just the movie, one movie with the commentary track. So I guess that is kind of taking away from actually buying that physical media then. Um, changing uh, paces here a little bit. Uh, for both of you, a question. Um, staying on the topic of physical media, though, favorite video game or movie that you you own a physical copy of sandra i'm assuming you're gonna pick a video game mark i assume movie but i'm curious mark i'll pick video game sure. oh yeah mm-hmm. mike tyson's punch out original oh. nintendo nice i was gi- i was gifted it i was in a bad car accident in 1988 and i was bedridden for nine weeks and someone gifted me a nintendo and I still have it. That's amazing. It's like, you know how like the white over time becomes like yellow beige-ish? It is the mm-hmm. most off-color <laughs> game console you'll ever see. But <laughs> the control, the original controllers still work. You have to kind of zhuzh the, uh, the uh, cartridges a little bit, but everything still functions. How about you, Sandra? Sandra? <laughs> mm, I don't know. Um... My mentality is that I don't put as much value into it. 
I would say maybe not even my favorite, but one of the more memorable ones was one Christmas. My brother-in-law got me a copy of the anniversary collector's edition of Clerks. And that really got me into Kevin Smith movies, which I'm a big fan of now, or at least I was for a time before things like Tusk and Jersey Girl came out. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you yeah. on that because I'm from Philly, so uh, those Kevin Smith movies were huge to us. Yeah, and I just remember that that collector's edition I got was was kind of almost like a shifting point. Um, another one that I always loved, just that I found, was the special edition um, uh, two pack of Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer. Oh my god, that's amazing. I'm a massive Conan fan. Really quickly, did you, uh, Sandro, uh, with Clerks, did you ever see the director's cut where it didn't end so well uh, with the ending? Yeah, and I'm not a fan of it. It's weird, right? Obviously, it doesn't yeah. make sense canon-wise because you wouldn't have had the sequel. But um, Obviously. I, I, but it was also put out before the sequel. So <laughs> I think that it would have... I mean, that alternate ending is on the collector's edition that I got, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, that's what I was asking. I thought it was. Yeah, Clerks X, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's on there. And, uh, and what about... Sorry, I was just going to say that that ending is one of the rare scenarios where I can honestly say the ending would have changed the entire movie as a result. Um, because I you, totally agree. You very, yeah, you very quickly look back in that final moment at what had led up to it and... It doesn't feel like the same comedy you were signing up for with the, I don't know, the theater-friendly version you get. Um, such an impactful difference, but I'm glad they went with the one they went with. Yeah, total buzzkill. That would have been. Yeah, it would have been an interesting way to end a movie that's all about a slice of life, though. I, I totally see why that would have been an original ending, but I, I agree I certainly with see why... Yeah, I certainly was, see why it was, uh, pro, uh, you know, thought about, or at least, con you know, the concept was tried. Yeah. But, yeah, it would definitely change the entire film. And that's a movie I think that everybody can rewatch at least a handful of times and still enjoy. But knowing that would be the ending that you're going to get, I think that would have cut down the rewatch value pretty quickly. I that, would agree. That being said, I think everybody should see that ending, just not on their first viewing. Um, mm -hmm. Because the other thing that it did for me aside from highlight the fact that the movie would have been drastically different, was actually kind of heightened my appreciation of the version we actually got. Um, just to, like I said, just to see what it could have been. I don't know. That contrast adds a lot to it. Yeah, for sure. What about you, Ben? What about, What's your most cherished collection video game or movie-wise? Uh, it would be a movie, and it is far from my favorite movie. Uh, it would be a rental copy of the Betamax release of Top Gun. <laughs> and that is because when my is it dad... framed? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I have it. It's on a shelf, but it's um, it's displayed prominently. But it uh, it was the first time where I was like, wait a minute. You can own a movie? Like this, like we could... I can collect these. I can just like watch a mine. movie when I want right. to. This is, I, I don't have to go to the theater. This is amazing. And that's, that's awesome. what, that's what set off my, my movie collection. My collection and what is the collection at? Like, what would you, do you know the numbers of VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, blah, blah, blah. Do you know all the, uh, all the it is cataloged. Uh, I, I don't have a, a current tally, but it's definitely over 5,000. Beautiful. Yeah. And you went to, you went to school for that, right? Uh, yeah, originally I went to school, I did a degree in English and history and then went back for business. <laughs> what a waste. Yeah, I know, right? I originally wanted to be a teacher. Well, uh, you speak English great, so I think you're doing well. I am wordsmith. It's it's worth the uh, $100,000 education. <laughs> but no, then I went back for a business whoa, and whoa, film whoa, whoa. and television production management. Yeah, whoa, hold on a second. Mark, you realize <laughs> we went to school in Canada, right? I, I don't know the numbers, man. I just throw numbers out there. Don't don't shit on me for our shitty wait, system. Wait a minute. How much does education cost in the United States? It's expensive. 
So one semester of university when I went, so we're thinking around 2000, early 2000s. One semester is 2000? No, no, no. I'm saying in the year 2000. So obviously, oh, yeah. you know, it's in been the a year long time since okay. I've been in school. But oh, got it. when I went to university, uh, which I believe you guys just call it college, maybe? Sure. College, uni, university, whatever you want to call it. All right. Because uh, we have college and university. I don't know what the hell junior college is for you guys. I'm not going to pretend to know American uh, educational formats, but... We don't have an education. <laughs> Fair. One semester, <laughs> so half a year of university cost me $2,400. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I spent uh, 5000 a year when I went. That's yeah. You guys are cute. Yeah, it's about five <laughs> to six thousand if you take into account books, right? Because you're looking at tuition somewhere around twenty five hundred, and then you know five to oh. five hundred to a thousand mm -hmm. for books, depending on what you're taking. Obviously, English it's a lot more and than history. <laughs> well, I, it, I would I would think a basic place nowadays is probably in the twenty thousand per semester range. Holy shit! Why? Possibly, yeah. It's probably up there. I'm. I, I, I think I think it's up there. I I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah. We don't have great people like Jordan Peterson teaching our youth. So, ooh, that's a topic. Oh. Hey, can we talk about him, or do we not? Is he a hot button? Uh, here he's pretty controversial. <laughs> that's what I what's, hear. What's the opinion of him in the states? Uh, it's, well, it's controversial as well. I mean, I would think it's just a split. I so figured, here it yeah. is. Average cost cost of college by state. So in Arizona, in state tuition, this must be semesters eleven thousand two twenty. Out of state tuition is twenty nine thousand seven fifty. So in state is much less expensive, but still over ten thousand. That's insane. Yeah, that's what these numbers are. Now I I just pulled the first thing up, so that's I don't want to crazy. I don't want to get all crazy. It's like, the... it's like you don't want people to get educated. <laughs> no, no. Why would we want that? We're spending, you know. Um, well, the reason I bring up Jordan Peterson is because he makes a good point. He talks about college tuition, for example, in the United States is skyrocketing, but no one's getting paid more. It's, it's like 80% administration fees now because they're paying off all these lawsuits and all these things that are happening. And it's all basically, yeah, it's all zhuzhing. It's like zhuzhing to make it run. It's all like the red tape to make it run, not the actual, you know, the the point of it is to learn, not to administer, you know. Yeah. But uh, it's interesting, yeah. It's an interesting look at the system needs a reset. It really depends on what side of it you're looking at. I mean, True. To, to, the, True. to the attendee, it is their education. Um, to the administrators, it is a business, and they have to keep the business going, um, as yeah. well as make mm -hmm. make the dollar. So it's unfortunate that um, you know potential future is compromised or inaccessible to people, so that somebody can make a dollar now. Yeah, I feel like it's sad that you monetize something like knowledge. I mean, here in Canada, tuition is so cheap that Ben and I can waste our time doing things like English degrees. Yeah, hey. this sounds amazing. <laughs> now, well, I'm... We, we lucked out in a way that um, most people that want to go to university can afford to go without the necessity of scholarships or grants or things like that. Um, they They do exist and they do help a lot of people, but... I feel like th with the upbringing I had, if I were living in the U.S. and trying to go to school, that never would have happened. Yeah, the student loans are ridiculous. Yeah. I know people with tens, tens of thousands of dollars. That's so unfortunate. I mean, sub sub 50,000 is low. No no joke. That's really that, sad because what... It is sad. Ben and I went to school for three, four different degrees and do not have that kind of debt at all. Yeah. Well, I hate you guys. I hate Canada as well now. I used to <laughs> like you guys. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I got three degrees and like a genius got three useless ones. Does that count for anything? No. 
because oh, okay. <laughs> I, I got a useless one and paid a lot more for it oh okay. right. <laughs> I, well, uh, I, I actually i went to college for aeronautical science and flight and i'm oh, actually a, i'm actually a licensed pilot um commercial multi-instrument rated and uh i had a near miss and i hit a piece of a plane break off in flight like on back-to-back flights and i quickly reevaluated. is right at coming out of college i quickly reevaluated my life that's absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Scared the living crap out of me. Can you go more into that? You said you had a piece come off of one? Like, what, yes. what were you flying? Uh, so if you've ever seen, like, the small single engine, you know, four-seater, like a yep. Cessna. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was like that. And the front of it, there's a little cone-shaped thing on the front where the propeller is for aerodynamics. Yep. It's called the nose cone. Mm-hmm. Well, I was ferrying a plane from Philadelphia to, like, West Virginia, and uh, it it was cracked. And on my inspection, I'm like, hey, this is cracked. And they're like, I, I was just out of college. And any hour that you could get was like gold. So, like, you couldn't turn down flying, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Of course. Um, so you took whatever you could get. And you're like, I'm like, this thing's cracked. It's like, that's cool. You guys, you, we'll tape it up and you'll be fine. So it's like February. And I'm over a place called the Smoky Mountains, which is between, you know, like the Appalach- Appalachian Mountains, kind of that whole yep. trail. Um, and the plane starts buffering pretty heavily. So I start looking for a place to land because it's always good to land under power than not under power. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? And all of a sudden it's like, thunk, and you're a kink. And a piece of the nose cone had split off and actually hit my landing gear underneath. Did not go through the windscreen. Thank goodness. But, uh, when, yeah, hit the, hit the landing gear, which was a fixed gear. So it wasn't like it didn't damage or anything. It just kind of bounced off it. Still. I was able to actually get it to the destination, land it. But, yeah, I was I was pretty uh, scared there for a second. Now, doing something like uh, like your your flight school uh, simulated uh, engine failure, I'm sure that's something you had to go through. Absolutely. Uh, were you ever just full on terrified? Like, I can't get this going. Or you're like, all right, well, this is just, you know, this is how you learn. Uh, I sh- I would shit myself every time. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like, it was. It's weird. I I had this weird thing. Is in the plane, I'm okay, but all like at night, up to like when I was gonna fly, I was terrified. Like yeah. I had this anxiety that just. And I don't know if I I ever should have really chosen it or not, but I really, I you know I was committed, so I really gave it everything I had. And then when these like incidents happen, they happen so close together right after graduating. I'm like, you know what? Let me let me take a step back. Now, did that change your your feeling on flying in general? Like, do you, do you still travel by airplane, or are you? Oh, just absolutely. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's funny because like none of yeah none of my experience has me afraid of flying. Um, but I didn't think I could handle it. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm okay to admit my shortcomings, man. <laughs> Do you have a fear of heights or anything? No, no fear of heights or anything like that. What are you afraid of? Oh gosh, probably like I I don't like insects and bugs like that. You should Arizona, probably not live in Arizona. Then. Well, yeah, Arizona has scorpions, and I've knock on wood not any had any in the house, but a lot of people have had it in their ho- homes, mm-hmm. and that that freaks me out a little bit. You have stuff like uh, rattlesnakes and tarantulas too, right? Yeah, we have rattlesnakes. Tarantulas aren't too bad, but what we, what we brought over are the camel camel spiders. Oh God, from, no! From Afghanistan, because what they got in like the duffel bags, and when they we were stationed there, and out here the the desert is very similar, mm-hmm. so they thrived when they came. You know, when whenever they got came came over here. So that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> I, it sounds like a I'm knock on wood. Nightmare. I haven't. I don't, it's not like it's like, we're not in the wilderness, man. I mean, we're in a metropolitan city here. We're pretty big. I, I guess, yeah. I See, mean, Phoenix I, is, what, number six in the country of, of, the, of the United States or something? Number six, is it seven? that big? Yeah, it's pretty big. A couple million, uh, yeah, one, one million plus. Always wanted to go. Yeah, I, okay. So the population of your city is about the population of the province I live in. All right. There you go. Well, come on over. Doors open, man, anytime. <laughs> if you head out to Arizona, reach out. It, I, I grew up in the forest, and uh, of course, growing up in the forest means you're growing up around hunters. So um, my family was full of them, uh, and my uncle bought 
and converted an old school bus into a mobile hunting camp. Oh, now, that's cool. It's amazing. Uh, it, yeah, it was amazing. It had uh, a series of bunks in the back. It kept some of the seats and like faced uh, faced them together, so you could put a table in the middle, and that was your like hangout couch dining area. There was an old wood stove and everything. It was great. Now, you have that, and it's stationed in the middle of a forest. Uh, you're gonna get some uh, creepy crawlies in there. I had a, a wolf spider pop out of the uh, the the wood chest, and Is that chase... the one with like twenty three thousand eyes. Oh, God. dude, I, I've never seen a spider that just turned and it was like it looked at me and then the front half reared back and it charged me on its hind legs. What? So I just, yeah, I tore to the front of the bus and like ripped open this old school bus handle to like, get the door open and just dove to the ground and rolled. And everyone's just outside staring at me like I'm a complete idiot. But yeah, there's a massive spider that's like half the size of my hand that decided I'm going to chase this kid. Wow, and that I, thing's creepy. I'm looking at them. They don't look like fun. No, but uh, camel spiders, no. I'm not going to Arizona now. <laughs> Screw well, that. That's, I, I didn't want you to come. That's why I said it. So cool. uh, I don't really work. have anything to contribute to this because I don't have You fear stories. nothing. Oh, no, I fear everything. I just oh, mean that let's uh, these. at one point I lived in a rural setting just outside of KW and the most I saw was like field mice and garden snakes. So I can't contribute with that. Although I did have asshole friends. Does that count for anything? Yes. <laughs> I still They're remember. Pets, aren't they? <laughs> I still remember because I lived not on a farm, but in a you know farm area. Right. But ours was just a like just a house on a plot of land there with my family. And I went to go see Jeepers Creepers. If you remember that one. Yeah. I went to go see it. I was, you know, a university student and uh, we went to like a 10 o'clock showing. I didn't drive. So I had to get my buddies to pick me up and drop me off. Um, there was about a 20 minute walk from my house. You would have maybe passed three other houses, cornfields. And at the top of the road was an old meat packing plant. So a slaughterhouse. After the movie, my friends thought it would be hilarious to drop me off in the parking lot of the meatpacking plant, <laughs> 20 minutes away from my house in the middle of the night, after I just finished watching a movie where college students were run off the road on rural streets. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, no. So I had to walk home for like 20 minutes, and every time the wind blew and it rustled all the cornfields, because, I mean, it was stalks of corn above my head on both sides of the dirt road, I ran a little bit. And the only reprieve I got from the cornfields was the little bit where it opened up to a forest on the one side. So your friends are dicks. Oh, 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 oh yeah. <laughs> Did that you think that they might? Amazing. Yeah. Were they not friend? Were they just called bullies back then? <laughs> <laughs> were, you the, were you the picked on guy all the time or? Keep in mind, this is also the time where things like jackass were very popular. So, <laughs> no, no, I'm not even kidding. Like, no, I get it. I'm from Philadelphia, and we got Bam Margera. Like, you know, you got Uncle Don Vito over there talking about his uh, thing over there with uh, with Bam and Ape. There was a period of time when that was at the peak of its popularity, where its primary demographic of 18 to 35 males treated their friends like assholes because it was funny. Yeah, they they all capital of Thailand each other. So yeah, that's <laughs> maybe that's why I don't like movies. Because <laughs> I got stuck twenty minutes to walk twenty minutes home after watching Jeepers Creepers. I mean, Jeepers I'm Creepers. When, movie. when I was watching it, it wasn't that scary. Um, after the fact, it felt a lot more terrifying. <laughs> Being at the top of a meatpacking plant parking lot at night, having to walk 20 minutes, yeah, that doesn't sound like a fun place that I'd want to be. I think this is <laughs> this is kind of where the fun demographic or dynamic between Ben and I comes from. The fact that we do a movie podcast, because he knows everything and anything about movies, actors, directors, and I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what makes the magic work, though, right, guys? 
Oh yeah, but it also like makes me subject him to movies that I think are amazing that he just hates. Wait, it's <laughs> it's also fun for I mean the listener gets to hear the take of someone who's very well in the know, as well as the take of someone who is literally taking the movie for face value because they don't know. I totally get it. I've been doing my podcast kind of monologue lately, and I w- I'm the one who doesn't know. So now no one on the podcast knows. What was uh, what was that like for you, um, going from having a, a co-host to doing mainly uh, things solo? I hate it. Yeah? Yeah, I miss, I miss my buddy. I really do. Um, it's just, I like the conversation, and... My it's I feel like uh, I've lost a lot more traction, to be honest, but, you know, it is what it is. So I have to shift and pivot and I kind of I'm kind of seeing how I want to move forward with it, you know, but that's part of the process, I guess. Now, I I know that anybody listening to this right now has been listening to your show for a while, but do you mind letting us know how you started into everything? Uh, Sure. Um, So. Five years ago, no, six years ago now, 2015, I had a psychic experience. I don't know another way to say it. Um, I was, I had started getting suicidal ideations Mm -hmm. and I started uh, wanting to really want to leave this place. Uh, That was my lowest point is when I started having those thoughts. So I sought some help with a therapist and the guy was what's called an NLP therapist stands for neuro linguistic programming Mm -hmm. and they do more hypnosis and more like meditation and kind of get in your subconscious and figure out you know some blocks from your past that could affect your future so um i go into my first meditation and there was i saw it was a it was a thursday night and I saw a black man in a suit at a podium looking to shake someone's hand to the right. He looks to the left to shake a guy, another person's hand, and I saw a gunshot go off. And I came out of this meditation or this thing that we were doing, and I'm like, I think I just saw this guy get shot. And uh, a week later was a shooting in South Carolina where uh, it was like a church shooting where nine people were shot, some white supremacist racist guy walked in and shot like nine people and the head of the church was a guy named clementa pinkney and in april 2015 there is a uh there's a video of him doing this gesture that i saw no and it's like um it really shook me because i didn't think anything of it till the guy told me so like my therapist told me like I, I didn't even, you know what I mean? Like, you know how some people like go down the rabbit hole of I've, I feel special. So I'll figure out that I'm special. Mm-hmm. Uh, that didn't happen that way for me. Like I'm burdened with it. So since that moment, I've had nothing, but I get moments of experiences of things that happen. Crazy. Man. Yeah. So, That's incredibly intense. Yeah. Um, and it's really weird. Cause like I come from science. So I, I, I'm a skeptic at heart, like the stuff that I experience, I'm like, how there's no way that I could have imagined this, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so like here, one of the examples is license plates are very unique, right? You can only get one, yeah. right? So each in, in the United States, you can have 50 of one type of license plate. So they're very unique. I'm at lunch or dinner with my ex-girlfriend at the, uh, at the time. And I start quoting Dr. Zeus, Seuss. I look at her, I go, you know, I would not eat this with a goat. I wouldn't eat this in a boat. Right. So I just start goofing around, like mm-hmm. just completely out of the blue pops in my head. Right. We we're on our way home. We literally pull out of the restaurant. I turn left and we're approaching a light and there's a car that wants to pull out onto the main street. Well, we're coming up to a red light. So I let the car out in front of me. The license plate is D-R-S-E-U-S-S. Oh, my God. And and the whole back is, like, littered with, like, Dr. Seuss stickers. So, like, the, the the weird synchronicity is, like, not only did that have to happen, like, I had to let that person in front of me. The only reason I let that person in front of me is because I was coming up to a light. Like, the timing of all that happening doesn't seem uh, random, if that makes sense. Oh, completely. So um, I've been on a quest to try to figure it out. I don't 
like so what happened is uh after that i really got into stuff um i work with a really serious guy my therapist Mm -hmm. and i went to a meditation one day and the guy never breaks character like he's always very stoic and and when we have a conversation he's always like sitting there stoic right so it's the end of a a conversation i had a i had a vision in a meditation the night before so as i'm leaving I'm like oh hey i just had this meditation i saw x in my vision and his eyes got all wide and he's like what like it it's almost like he broke character like what the heck he goes what and i go oh i had a vision i saw this guy in my meditation i was doing meditation yesterday and this vision popped in my head and he goes i have a call with him he's a very good friend of mine we have dinner every once in a while i can't say the name because he's very prominent like everyone would know this person all right um so it was just one of these weird things like he the guy was shocked like that i saw that person you know what i mean so like it's stuff like that so i the reason i came up with the show knocked conscious was like it knocked me conscious like it woke me up it didn't knock me out it knocked it woke me up so that's kind of the concept behind that that is incredible. Yeah. And then the beer Googles one is literally like the the proof is we are very dichotomous people. Like we have the ability to both create and destroy. Right. I mean, so the beer Googles one is like a total mess around one that I just joke around and make fun. And it allows me to, to have two sides of my personality show. Ta-da. Very interesting. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, do you guys have any other projects on uh, upcoming on the future besides the bargain bin? Or are you guys going to shift or do something other than movies after a while? Or what are your what are your future plans? Um, it's something we haven't really talked about a lot. We're, we're still kind of riding the wave of this. It is relatively new. It's only been about six months that we've been doing this. Um I, I would love to record. I love recording anyway. I had a podcast years and years ago that was doing all right. Um, I, I just love being able to talk. I love being able to perform. I love having a microphone in front of me. Um, um, without somebody like Sandra, though, Sandra is the motivator for sure. And, and you can say that about BS Bargain Bin. You can say that about uh, Pixel Opinions. He gets everybody in line. Uh, without him, I would not be doing this, even though I would want to. I just wouldn't. Uh, he is like the key for us to be recording. Uh, Sandro, is there anything you, you feel like you would want to be doing differently or uh, an, another uh, branch you'd like to uh, investigate, something new you'd like to try? Um, at this moment, I'm just happy with what we're doing. Uh, first of all, thank you. That was very nice of you. and surprised it took <laughs> being on a podcast for you to say something nice about me. Um <laughs> I think the the beauty that's, of doing that's called praise in public, criticize in private. <laughs> <laughs> I think the um, I think the beauty of doing a podcast uh, that's surrounding movies, especially older movies or movies that um, just didn't get ne- necessarily the recognition that they should have or we wanted them to, is that there's going to be no shortage of content to talk about. Um, so any sort of shift that would take place would be. Sp- purely out of desire, not out of necessity. Um, Movie-wise, we could probably go forever. They ain't going to stop making them, and we'll never run out of ones to talk about. Definitely not run out of bad ones, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I've got I, I a wanna, back catalog. I want to touch on Ben's nice compliment of how I get things going, because the irony is that the podcast he used to do with his other buddies that I had no part in uh, zombie dolphins from space was actually one of the things that motivated me to start pixel opinions um, because I heard Ben doing it. He was having a good time with his friends and I thought, well, I can do this with video games. And then it was the knowledge that I amassed with that that allowed me to make BS bargain bin happen. So Ben kind of indirectly made BS bargain bin happen by doing his first podcast. You oh, guys thanks, are just buddy. magiing each other all over the place. <laughs> did well, you did did you cut your hair, Sandro, so that you could uh, sell it for a chain for uh, for Ben's uh, pocket watch? No, no, I I just shaved my head because I'm balding. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> I was trying to help, man. Hey, hey, man, I know who I am. I know what it is. <laughs> I can't. I can't change Very that. Nice. Uh, as soon as the uh, hair on the top started getting thinner, I just started growing my beard out more and more. Perfect. Well, we've been uh, we've been in this about uh, an hour and a half almost. Welcome to the time warp. That's how it works. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you guys want to talk about or share? I'm I'm sure we could have a future episode uh, down the road. But uh, is there anything you guys wanted to share? Finalize, share all your uh, socials and all your cool information. How to get a hold of you guys? Uh, ben, you want to do that? <laughs> I don't want uh, this, to talk over this, each other. <laughs> no, this is your area, buddy. This is your territory, not mine. What are you talking about? Um, I don't even know what our website is. Um. Anchor we have a website? It. No, I guess, uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> this is why you should be doing this. Um, you can find the podcast uh, at anchor.fm slash bsbargainbin. Ben's right. We don't have an actual website. Um, but we did start putting our podcast up on YouTube as well. Um, not so much so that there's something for people to watch because the actual footage shown is not fantastic, but just another medium where they can find the podcast. Um, so that's probably the two best places. Otherwise you can hit us up on Twitter at BS bargain bin, or even on Facebook. Uh, we try to be a little more active on there or at least make announcements. We're going to be doing the monthly fan pick for a review, which is something that, um, you were actually the first one, right? We kind of just had the idea to, to ask people for a recommendation. You were the first and, Hopefully we can keep that going. So And I wedged my way into your show. I just forced my way in. <laughs> Crowbar and all. I mean, hey, it <laughs> if it was meant to be, it was meant to be, right? I mean, we had a blast doing that episode. It's gonna be going live if, I mean, as of the recording in about thirty minutes. Um so Beautiful. by the time people hear this, they'll be able to check it out. But that's where you can find us or, you know, like I said, just 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 search on your favorite podcast, whatever, like I, oh, I'm having difficulty remembering. We're on what? Apple, Spotify. Um, All the big ones. Yeah. I don't know, Ben, if you remember, I don't off the top of my head, but. You no, can... the nice thing about Anchor is that they have a soda on at least eight of the biggest uh, podcast providers. So. Awesome. Very nice. Yeah. And BS Bargain Bin, if you go on uh, at, I think it's at BS Bargain Bin, right? Yeah, so at BS Bargain Bin, you can just go in there on Twitter, and it's got the anchor link in the uh, profile. Yeah, perfect. And please, anyone Look feel free that. to send us uh, recommendations. Uh, I mean, I just love torturing Sandra with my selections, but let's uh, let's get some fresh ideas out there. Yeah, let's torture everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the torture podcast. <laughs> that just sounds like screaming and just fire and brimstone all the time. That might work. It might be an ASMR uh, podcast. Sandra, get on this right now. No. Oh. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you so much for joining. Uh, it's been it's been a pleasure for sure. Thank you so much for having us on, man, and thank you for being on our show as well. This uh, it, it's been great having a chance to hang out on on the two very different podcasts, but also similar in the fact that we can just shoot the shit, have fun, and uh, not only learn about you know. Our, our film taste but uh sharing personal stories man like i i need to hear more from you i'm going to question you you have to have us on again because i need to learn more about you please i'd i'd love to have you on so you're always welcome and um if you ever have a serious topic we always talk i i have like i said i have two sides of our show is we have a serious side and we have a fun side if you have a fun side you want to ch chat come on like bring me the topic we'll we'll chat about it if you have a serious topic same thing like if you come across something, you're like, man, this is something that, you know, something even in Canada that you'd like put attention to. Um, I'm happy to talk about almost any topic. I'm a pretty curious guy. So, All right, well, trust me, I've got some ideas brewing right awesome. now. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited. Um, Sandro, thank you as well for coming on today. Yeah, I was just kind of here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, thanks for just sticking around and, you know, taking up taking up that oxygen over there in Ottawa. Not <laughs> Ottawa. Is no, it Ottawa? Well, it's no, Ontario, no, right? No, no, Ottawa is like five hours away. Yeah, but I mean, that's right. But it's Ontario. You right? and I had okay. the pleasure of being on the Ben Mason show right. today, apparently. So, A. Yes. I mean, I'll take it. 
That that's a good thing I take. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I can I can ramble for a little while. Oh, I love it. It's awesome. Um I do the same thing, man. And I I open the door. So if you ever want to come back on, like I said, we can chat and I'm sure we'll chat after we hang up here. Everybody out there in the uh, social media podcasting world, this has been another episode of the Beer Googles, double E double O double G. Please subscribe, follow, rate, review. Love to hear some feedback. BS Bargain Bin, check it out. It is fun. Ben and Sandro, they're two, two really great guys. I hope you enjoy their show. Um, Sandro, can you share one more time? What was it? Pixel Opinions? Was that the uh, website for the video games? Yeah, yeah. If you just go to pixelopinions.com, we have an actual website. And on there, you can find links to our uh, reviews, podcasts, top fives, um, our YouTube channel. Uh, we do have guest posts on there, too. Ben's written a couple reviews for us on things like the Conan video game. Um, but you can find that all on pixelopinions.com. Awesome. Well, thank you again. And Ben, thank you again for joining us as well. Thank you so much. Once again, it's been another episode of Beer Googles, everybody. Have a great day.